Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy, happy, happy New Year. Hi, Irina. I see you. I know you're going for your bike ride, so I don't expect you to stay on very long. <laughs> and we have already started. I don't need that banner anymore. Good afternoon. Good morning. I know there are some people here who are logged in from the West Coast, some all the way from Asia, in which case it's good night. Um, wherever you are from, please send a hello in the chat and let me know um, where you're tuning in from, which country, which city. And uh, yeah, Happy New Year. Okay, so screen is black. Hmm. Can everyone else see me? I think that might just be a gear, Leslie, might just be yours. I think everyone else can see me. So just so you guys know, live chat, these monthly live chats at the moment are going on on multiple channels. So you will have to forgive me if I am kind of here and then attending to something on the other side. I'm on Instagram over there and then here with Facebook profile page and YouTube. Uh, all right. So Instagram, my peeps on Instagram, just an FYI, there is if you have a question to ask. Um, you can ask at any time, of course, just throw that into the chat, but on Instagram, um, you can actually click, I believe there's a question mark there that you can click and, um, submit your question there. It'll be a little bit easier for me to find than if you just throw it into chat. Cause sometimes with everyone, uh, logging in or saying hello or whatever, I, sometimes it becomes a little bit hard for me to find it. So that's just one little tip. Um, Sasha, how are you? Jay Crawford, hi Farouk. Farouk is here from all the way from Iran, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Nicholas, Irina gave me that wave. Nicholas, uh, what's on the agenda today? We have a few things on the agenda today. Um, Fur Rochers, of course, as you all know, this is my shit, my jam. Um, that is related to something that I wanna talk about actually. Uh, hopefully at some point they won't just be looking at me and I'll be able to eat them. I'm just not sure if that's going to be very distracting for everybody else on the live. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got some good stuff for today. As always, I have to say that I very, very, very much appreciate all of you who join um, and also how many of you submit questions in advance. It makes such a difference because it allows me to kind of think about, you know, what we can talk about or what was on most people's minds and see what's the most relevant or most important thing to address uh, in this particular session. Of course, I also appreciate when you are logging in and submitting your questions live because it gives me a little break that doesn't feel like I'm going by a script, you know, and allows me to break out of that. So if you have anything you want to ask, this is 2021, what's a new year, um, feel free to throw them into the chat, okay? Uh, some people on Facebook. Hi, John, France, Felipe. You're up early on a Saturday morning. Oakland, California in the house. Uh, Alfonso from Puebla, Mexico. Papa CJ from India. Oh, man, I remember that day we hung out at your house with everybody. What a riot. You're one of the funniest people I know. And he's a, you know, he's a comedian. So better be funny, right? Um, Alex. Starting the year with you, finishing the year with you as well. Welcome from Brazil. Neelam, Happy New Year, all the way from London. Yeah, Irina from Minsk. Olga from Chile. Um, Manuel from Mexico, at, uh, no, Mexico, sorry, Texas, right? Alipta from India, Calcutta. Aguera, I think it's working now, awesome. From New Jersey, Irina. Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. Wow. You know, I've heard of that island so many times, but I've never actually like Google mapped it to know exactly where it is. I'd love to go there one day. Hello. I gave from Ankara, Turkey. Merhaba. And Yelena from, oh, Yelena from Serbia. Hi. All right. I do, I, I do apologize. It's going to be a little bit um, of hellos everywhere. Saita from Netherlands. Onod, my Kardashian. Actually, Kar my Kardashian is redundant, isn't it? Because Kardashian means my brother, anyways, in Turkish. Hi, Onur. I really do wish there was a better way for Instagram chat to like scroll without completely like swiping everything up. 
Debraj from Kolkata, Wicked, um, Dallas, Texas. That's right, Manuel. I, I was like, I was trying to figure out where, where, where. Hi, George. Hi, Ruchpai from India, from Pune. Wow, everyone in the house. Craw Jay Crawford is from Harlem, Holland in the house. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Very, very cool. Dimitri, where are you now? Are you in Jordan still? I don't know where, where everyone is from now. Kathleen from South Africa. Dasha. Oh, I miss you, Dasha. It's been a long time, hasn't it? From um, LA or at least California, at least. Uh, my magnetic board. Yes, this is, I need to add to this board this year. Cause I did not add, did least, actually, no, I did add one. I added one, Cincinnati. No, Cleveland. I'm sorry. I don't even know where the hell I go. I didn't go anywhere. I went to one place and I forgot where the hell I went. Um, I did add one magnet here, but I am planning to expand this board as well as the content on it in this coming year. Cause I need to make 20 countries. It's a little life goal before I turn 50. I'm not turning 50 anytime soon. <clears throat> Just saying, you know, before 50, I want to have a hundred countries. So, <laughs> um, Hi, Christian. Hi, Dasha again. Hi, Mariana. Erin, I'm assuming from Turkey, the way the G has the little thingy on it. Um, Jose, Leah, you can reunion island. All right, cool. Okay. So, uh, oh, Zeev, my friend Zeev from Toronto. Oh, I have this really funny story. Zeev, I don't know if you're sticking around or if you just tuned in and you're leaving. Also, hi, Natalie. I hope everything is doing good with your bread business, your bakery business um, from Jordan. Dimitri, Dimitri, you on multiple platforms right now, aren't you? <laughs> My friend Zeev, I remember this very, very funny uh, story I was just recently telling to someone else. <clears throat> we were talking about like quick, very quick reactions, physical reactions and uh, reflexes. And we were at this event in Vancouver and one of my friends, a local friend, local dance instructor in uh, Toronto, had always has these funny jokes, right? He's got these hilariously, sometimes really good jokes and sometimes like the cheesiest thing ever. And you're just like, why are you even telling this? And why are you telling this so many times, right? Anyways, uh, he had this knock-knock joke and I particularly like knock-knock jokes because they're relatively easy to remember. So he told me about this joke and how he had played this trick on everybody else in his school and his students and everything. And he didn't do it on me. I think he knows better, but he did, you know, tell the rest of our friends. And so there was this moment where I was talking to three of my friends with my friend Zeev across from me and um, another friend who was here, uh, Shani and JP. So we're in like in a four, right? And I'm trying to tell my two friends here a story and Z keeps on going, knock, 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 knock. And I'm like, shh, because I'm, I'm trying to complete my story, right? So he keeps on saying, knock, 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 knock. And then finally, at one point, I, I looked at him and I said, no. I, I didn't actually say who's there. I just said, no. And he slapped me. Yes, slapped me, okay? <clears throat> so the joke is, you say, knock, knock. The person says, who's there? You smack them and you say, KGB, we ask the questions here, right? Now, it's quite funny, right? Except if you actually slap the person who was not expecting a joke or anything like that. So I just reflexively, I did not even realize, you know, it just happened so fast. So he slapped me and my hand went up and was like, pow! Like a really, really hard slap. Um, our two friends were looking at each other and looking at us and not sure what to make of it. It was like a very, it, his slap was kind of like, and then mine was like, like really hard. So anyways, um, Zeev, I don't know if you're still here, but that will, that will always last in my memory as one of those, one of those moments where I almost killed my friend for a joke. <laughs> Um, anyways, if you, oh, there he is, Z. Now he's over here. You, I see you trying to, you know, maneuver around here. Um, if you have any funny jokes for the new year, feel free to throw them in the chat. If, uh, they're really, really good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them on here. 
It was the office KGB joke for the office people. And I, I did not start that joke. You started it. You see, Ziva is instigating already, but he's instigating because he is in Toronto and I'm over here and we can't, you know, we can't sort this out right now. Lucky, you are lucky. Um, all right, a few more people joining in today right now. Uh, good morning, happy new year. I should be showing these. I forget that I can actually show them. Ooh, Dasha, Felipe, Dasha says hi. <laughs> Um, Ale Mancia, I think from Argentina, no? No, or Spain. Loredo from Milan, Italy. Si, claro que te recuerdo. Um, all right, Zay Barbosa, peace and love, slap. <laughs> Zeev said he blacked out and he came to a week after. <laughs> we do call, yes, we do call it the slap slap. It was, that's exactly how our friends described that joke. They were like, all you heard was knock, knock. No, slap, slap. <laughs> no, no more knock, knock jokes, yes. Um, Manuel, dang, Magna automatically reacts with fight mode. Ain't no flight about you. Nope, there isn't. Um, very rarely is there ever a flight. <laughs> uh, all right, is Noggin still alive? Dimitri, yes, Noggin is still alive, but I think he has found a new home because I have no idea where he is. Uh, when I went to Jordan, I had a chance to, uh, my first trip to Jordan, meet Dimitri, who was a DJ out there. And we had this little toy. I was trying to get something creative with my travels because I've traveled to so many places and I take a lot of pictures of myself, you know? So I wanted to have something that I could take a picture of because sometimes I was traveling by myself and I didn't have someone to take a picture of me. So I was like, you know, this would be a representation of me. And I had a little wind up doll <laughs> um, that was, you know, would dance crazy, which I guess is appropriate, right? Suits me. So I had this little wind up doll and I brought uh, this doll to this toy to my trip um, in Jordan. And we were, we, we called him Noggin. I think that's what it, the, the brand name was. So we would just put him everywhere and we're like making him dance and stuff. So yes, he is alive. I just don't know if he's here. I don't know where he is actually, to be honest. <laughs> All right, um, Dimitri said, I switched to Instagram because I thought you were only reading comments on Insta, but apparently you're reading both. Now I'm enjoying the reflection story. Um, all right, Paul in the house. Uh, Chaitanya Patil, just watch your TEDx. Awesome, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a good way to start the new year with a very good message, I think. Felgar, happy new year all the way to Mexico City. Raluca, happy new year to you too. All right. Um, hi, Ivan. Um, so there, there are like a lot of topics. I don't, I didn't know if today should be, you know, one of those heavier days where we're actually like talking about a lot of stuff or kind of have it like a celebratory happy new year with all of you. Um, I'm very glad that all of you could could join um, today. I know some of us are probably still recovering. That's why I didn't do it January 1st. Usually I do it on the first Friday. I moved that to today because I know some people actually were like, yeah, so I had dinner with a friend and he got a little drunk and aggressive and well, he's in the hospital now. Um, I'm okay. <laughs> so, but I couldn't make it to your live if it was yesterday. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> uh, better to have at least one day's rest, right? <clears throat> Hi, Ahmed, Egypt in the house. Um, Felipe said, my best memory of us is dancing together. Session 73 in Manhattan to the live music of New Swing Sextet. Yes, I remember. And I remember the pictures. The pictures are terrible. They are horrendous. That's, you know, when you had those like little digital cameras, which took 480 pixel photos compared to the phones that take like 4K resolution videos and shit, right? But yes, I do remember that. That was a great time. And that was such an intimate night of dancing. Like the band was right here. Like you could you could play the xylophone while you were doing your basic step. It was that close to you. It was awesome. <clears throat> I do remember that. Mauricio Gallardo, Trump or Biden? Um, I think the results speak for themselves, no? Or are you asking me? Because in that case, the results still speak for themselves. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, Dimitri, we should book the hour talk next time on Kobe party. Yeah, let me know. Keep me posted. And Igaro, where do you teach classes? I, at the moment, I teach classes only online. I don't teach regular classes. However, I do teach um, uh, 
two week intensives and I have online on demand courses. If you want to find anything out about that stuff, you can go to my website, magnavipal.com. Speaking of which, before we get into it, um, there are some announcements, one announcement, really just one announcement. On Monday, we are starting a ninth session of QFIT. If you don't know about QFIT, QFIT was a fitness thing that I had started during quarantine just so that I wouldn't, you know, get balloon up and, and lose my shape and my fitness levels. So I was doing it every day for 60 days straight. And then we switched over to a monthly thing where we now have um, a group of people who sign up. We do every week, Monday circuits training, strength training, Tuesday interval training for cardio. And then Wednesday we do yoga and then the replays are there. So you have a choice of, you know, doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday circuits, Tabata interval training, Tuesday, Thursdays, however you want to do it. Um, anyways, I wasn't sure. I thought that that would have lasted maybe like two months, three months, but we are on our ninth month and it has been amazing. Like honestly, for not having gym access and only really starting that now and working out with online with these workouts twice a week, pretty much. Right. Like it has kept me fit and, and sane and sane. That's even more important. But yeah, we are starting our next um, round on Monday. So if you would like to join, it is an awesome way to like stay fit. It's a creative workout. It's like, you know me and my dancing, just expect the same level of quality and the same level of creativity in my exercises. And I come up with new exercises for each week. So you have that option of, of training um, with that. You can, of course, also find that on, let me see if I can just throw that up there, on magnapile.com slash QFIT, okay? Um, what are you saying here, Manuel? Don't lose it. You were climbing stairs, carrying a whole man piggyback style toy. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> um, and Saitha just said, Krishna said, you should all join her. She had, she had joined us. I can't remember if it was you who said that you lost, like, 18 kg or something just doing the the workouts with me um so yeah exercises are fab as she says uh okay boom comments here Wim, you made it all right and plamena happy new year from germany happy new year back to you a kg sorry not 18 18 kg she lost a kg doing the workout so boom <clears throat> all right um so before I, I get started, um, there are a couple of questions I would love to ask all of you um, just to ponder. You don't have to write your answers in the comments if you don't want to share it. You could also also just share it with me privately um, in a DM later if you if you want to engage on that topic by any chance. But I'm just curious, you know, uh, what was one of the best lessons you got out of 2020? I mean, I have mine, but I'm curious what one of the best lessons that you learned from 2020 is. What is a challenge of 2020 that you are still struggling with? Because I know we've all gone through things in 2020, but some things we got through and some things we are still working on. So, you know, um, if you're not familiar with the purpose of these empowered live chats, uh, it is for me to be of service. It's for me to help if I can, provide some advice if I can, ponder the question a little more deeper if I don't have an answer for you today so that I can come up with something in the future. Um, my life has always felt better when I am able to help other people. So these live chats and the questions that you pose um, and the answers that you give me are really a very easy way for me to kind of fulfill my life purpose, right? <laughs> So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in there, but ponder those questions. So what was one of the best lessons that you gained from 2020, like going through whatever you went through? Um, what is something that was a challenge in 2020 that you're still struggling with that you maybe you want help with? You know, perhaps I can provide some insight or or questions, you know, to help you reflect. Um, what is something you want to accomplish in 2021? I will tell you what I want to accomplish. For me, my website, a new website, well, I, I think some of you guys saw the post that I had made, like, should I do Squarespace or Wix or WordPress? And I ultimately stayed with WordPress, which is a little bit more complicated, but I have finally, I am so close to launching. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to go live in two weeks with that website. 
So that was one huge accomplishment for me because I was thinking about that for two years, but it's because of this pandemic that I was able to finally hunker down and work on it and lots of learning, lots of YouTube, you know, tutorials on how do you create um, a sidebar, you know, and how do you change the padding and blah, 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 blah. So that should be going live. So that's one thing that I want to accomplish. And the other thing is a book. Some of you know about the story. It's a, an important story that I really want to tell because it it is the way I'm going to end up getting closure for it is when I'm able to actually share the lesson that I received from it. And I've been meaning to do a book, but I have hesitated because I have second-guessed myself. I have second-guessed the importance of the story and the relevance of my experience. But anytime I've shared it with close friends of mine, they're like, no, it's important. You know, how you went through it, how you deal with things, your mindset, um, your approach, how you communicate these things are important. You should put that out there. So uh, I am going to do that this year, even though I've been waiting to do that since like three years ago. So that's my two things that I want to accomplish this year. So let me know um, what is something that you want to accomplish for this year. Also a couple more highs. Hi, Janice from Aruba. Still jealous every time you say Aruba because I would definitely prefer to be there. Eric, uh, you've been dancing for 20 years. I've been dancing for 20 years too and we haven't danced together. Well, let's see what 2021 holds. Um, Wim said, I realized that some people kind of woke up and realized that it is important to care for those that are alone. That is, uh, yeah, that's a realization for sure. Um, Jason, happy new year to you too. Felipe, how creative we can all be. Um, one of the lessons that he had learned, he learned to code and web design and created worldsaucerradio.com, which is a, a pretty cool site. Um, so yeah, the, here you go. You know, here's another example of someone who took this pandemic and, and learned something from it, um, and has grown from it. Um, uh, Wim's comment continuing because lots of people didn't really realize how lonely one can get until they realize it themselves due to this pandemic. That is very true. That's probably one of the hardi hardiest English. Um, one of the hardest things to have done or to have gone through in this period was being alone, right? Um, or not even just being alone, even being with somebody, right? Because there's a difference between being alone when you choose to be alone and being forced to be alone and being forced to be alone for an extended period of time. And there's also being with someone with a schedule where you're like, hey, honey, see you after work, you know, and you're gone for the day and you're doing your own thing. Hey, honey, I'm going to go out with my friends and um, for dinner or whatever, I'll see you later to, hey, honey, oh, you're still here? Shit. You know, like, so, you know, it, it was a blessing and a curse in every way, whether you were by yourself, whether you were with your family, whether you were with your significant other, it's a, it was like a blessing and a curse and it really depended on how you looked at it. But it also did force you to really reflect and say like, what does this mean? What does this really mean? You know, like, what can I gain from it? What can I learn about myself and where I am right now? And is this somewhere that I really want to be that I'm choosing to be or have I have I just fallen into some trap of, of routine and, and whatnot, you know? So it is, it is interesting. Zeev asked me, cool, you're doing it yourself. Yes, Zeev, I am doing my own website myself. Isn't that amazing? I remember you, I was helping you with um, some website backend stuff. Uh, John, hey, Max, still at work, saw you online. Hi, John, happy new year. Um, Dasha, yay for your book. I'd love for you to share your mindset. I know some of you <laughs> This one will be a very interesting um, book. I, I do hope when I publish it that you will take a moment to read it and share your thoughts and share the book because it's the experience really. I don't want to give too much away because uh, I want I want that to be your first uh, exposure to the story. Uh, hi, Justin. Will I be doing an audio book to go with it? Well, you know, one of my QFIT ladies, Catherine, told me, I have to post her compliment, uh, her testimonial, but she said that I have a velvety voice. So maybe I will do an audiobook <laughs> um, if enough people request it. Let's see. 
Manuel said, 2020 was a sledgehammer to my mental health, had the opportunity to strengthen my mind in areas I never would have known that I needed to strengthen and also able to use my patience, indeed. And that was one of the things that, um, that well, going back to QFIT, like, honestly, I, I think if I did not have fitness, if I did not have that daily routine of physical activity and movement, um, I'm not sure that I would have maintained my sanity because for me, especially being someone who's so active, it wasn't just the social aspect that, you know, I'm not able to go out. I'm not able to travel. I'm not able to go to these um, salsa socials and see my friends. It was just, I'm not able to move. I need to move. I need to be doing something. I like for most of you who know me, I'm quite hyperactive. So, you know, imagine just being in a small apartment with like no gym, no nothing to, to do here. So QFIT actually helped me stay and stay sane. Oftentimes the questions that I used to get from people asking, you know, how are you doing? How's everything going? And yeah, like work, to this day still hasn't come back, right? But I was like, I am fit, I'm healthy, I'm physically healthy, and I've got my sanity. And as long as I've got those two things, I can get through anything. Like work will come back, you know, all of that stuff will find its way. You will, you will, you will make do. But if you don't have this and you don't have your physical health to support whatever it is you're trying to pursue, then you're in trouble, you know? So yeah. Irina, I know you would support the book. I, I, I know you're you're always one of the most supportive people I've had a chance to encounter online. Uh, Alipta, so happy to hear this. Munchkin in my house. Uh, she's a smart woman. I believe that said something similar. <laughs> oh, hold on. So I got some um, questions here. Boom. Well, that's what that's for, right? You ever touch your heavier med student? Someone seeking your wisdom who has? Okay, so. You are a teacher. Have you ever met? Ah, shit. You're a teacher. Have you ever met a student or someone seeking your wisdom who has unwittingly taught you something profound? Maybe not taught you, but they impacted the impact that the the impact that they had on you was something you could take from the experience. Um, yeah, that's a brilliant question and very um, yes, it has happened. Why is this not so focusing? All right, there we go. Um, yes. I, as a teacher, I have had um, people who I'm teaching who have impacted me in, in pretty profound ways, mainly from uh, what they deal with. Because a lot of the classes that I do, especially when I start doing private lessons, there's a lot of coaching beyond just the dance. If you've ever taken a private with me, you know that we end up talking about tons of other things that are pretty important. And most often what I've learned from a lot of my students is their strength. Like it's, it's really amazing to see how strong they are going through whatever it is that they're going through and then still finding that ability to seek out help to, to grow in a different way. Um, most of the time it's, it's that because I get to hear some personal stories about my students and when they share how they went through it, like those are moments for me that empower me to be strong to be resilient to know that I can also push through yeah you know? thank you for that question Manuel um you hyper I, <laughs> I know that feeling I do inline skate cycling and table tennis apart from so yeah so getting getting stuck at home is gonna be tough Eric said is it gonna be on two or on one it's not a dance book my friend it's not a dance book um you will be a little surprised by it I think Dasha said, my biggest shift that I came to at the end of 2020 was moving away from the job and into creating my next business. Bigger this time so that I can wean myself off the employment treadmill. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I think a lot of us had our, even work, some of my close friends who were fortunate to have their job the entire time ended up getting so much more work loaded onto them that now they're like, oh, this job is fantastic. I can work from home, blah, blah, blah. Now all of a sudden it's like, I hate my job. I hate my job, but I need this income. I hate it though, you know? So yeah, it has definitely brought a lot of revelations into what's really important to us and what is our time worth, you know? Even if we're making shit ton of money, but we have no time to relax or spend with our, our friends or even make that intimate conversation with somebody who we are quarantined with, you know, then what exactly are we working so hard for, right? What are we enjoying about life? So yeah, 
Um, that's a, that's a great move. I wish you all the best with that pursuit, Dasha. Hello, Victor <laughs> from Peru. Gracias. Okay. Um, so I wanted to to also say, uh, in this week we had um, our last QFIT for QFIT eight, our last yoga session on Wednesday. And at the end of my yoga sessions, usually what I like to do is. Um, I read a poem, I try and find some like meaningful poem, and then we do a little gratitude session at the end of it. So everyone gets to share what they're thankful for. Every week we do this. And I never did this before QFIT, so it has been a new experience for me as well. Um, and it's so beautiful like to actually take the time to express gratitude. We don't do it enough. I know I don't do it enough. Even though I'm so thankful for the things that have happened in my life, I know that I do not do gratitude. Just stopping for five minutes and saying, you know what, I'm thankful for this, 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 this. Just list three things, you know. Um, but our sessions in QFIT have gotten a lot deeper. They used to be sometimes like, I am thankful for the sunshine today, right? Sometimes it's still as simple as that. And if you're thankful for that, that's great, right? But sometimes we get a little bit deeper and seeing as this was our last one for 2020, most um, everyone was talking about like how difficult this year was and how they're ready to be finished with this year um, and move on to something and kind of like forget this year. And as I was listening to everybody, when it came my turn to, to do my gratitude, um, the truth is, I'm thankful for this year. Like, you know, every year of my life has been the best year of my life. <laughs> um, there are times I can remember in my childhood that were memorable. I had good experiences, but every year is my best year. You know, last year wasn't my best year. My 30, 30th birthday was a good day or an awesome day, I remember. But that year is not my best. This is my best year. The reason this is my best year is because this is who I am today. And I am this person because of these current experiences, you know, as well as everything in my past. And I know that this year has been a challenge, like beyond challenging for everybody. I think everyone has had to deal with it in a way that they had never expected to deal with anything in their life. This is a first for so many people to deal with, right? And some things were really, really intense, like losing jobs. Uh, I know so many dance dance instructors with studios who lost their studio eventually, just couldn't open, you know, there's because of restrictions and whatnot. Um, myself included with all the work that I had planned for the year, which has gone even into 2021, which isn't, you know, scheduled to return anytime soon. Um, but what I realize is Contrast is important. Just like we used to sit there and think about all the people that we would see on a regular basis and oh, I got so many friends and I'm always around people and you, you inflate the importance of those relationships and you think that there's so many close, close friends that you have. And it's the pandemic that shows you who is really close to you, even as far as they may be, you know? And so it's, there, those kind of lessons, you wouldn't get a chance to learn. You wouldn't get a chance to um, experience if it wasn't for this year, right? And all the crazy stuff that has happened in this year, the worst things that happened are to show us where we need to grow, right? In, whether it's internal, whether it's something that we reacted poorly or we um, couldn't deal with something, you know, whether it was loneliness, whether it was our significant others, whether it was family, whether it was depression, whether it was um, a lack of activity or, or just the poor eating habits, whatever it was, was something that we realized, and it took this for us to realize that we need to work on that, right? And if you ex expand that into politics, into what has been going on and, and all the bad things and the way things were mismanaged and whatnot, it shows us where things need to be fixed, right? And I know in other ways in my life that there are things that I do, that I do often until it kind of hits me like a, a truck. And that's when I learn. It's like somebody pinching me here and there. I'm like, 
yeah, whatever. I got a high pain threshold. Keep pinching. I'm still going to do the thing that I should probably not be doing. It's until I get hit with that truck that I realize, all right, I need to take a break. You know, one of those things I, I've mentioned in past talks is my injuries. You know, I got injured three times before I finally rested, before I finally took a break for myself. You know, the first two injuries, three years of being injured, all because I just did not listen. The first injury was a sign, Maggie, you are overdoing it. You need to just relax. You need to chill out, take a break. You're, you're going to burn out. And what I did is I took ibuprofen instead <laughs> and continued dancing, continued working, continued traveling, right? Then I got injured again. Same thing, take a break. No, I just changed the shoes that I was wearing, which were hurting my foot, pop some more ibuprofen, put some pain medication on my toe, my broken toe, and continue to work. It was only my third injury after three years that finally hit me like a truck. And I was like, okay, I'm clearly missing this lesson from before. I do need to take a break, right? So a lot of the things that we've been dealing with that we're, we're getting hit even harder with right now or we're hit with in 2020, uh, that's one of the ways I like to look at it. Maybe it was a lesson that we were not learning when we were just told in a very nice, kind, soft voice with, you know, here's a, here's a little lollipop and let me tell you what's important, you know? We weren't getting the message. And so we, got, we had to get hit by a truck and then they're like, oh shit, that's the message, right? So it's just a way to, to, to kind of look at things um, that have happened in this year. Um, just a couple of comments here. Moises from Monterrey, Mexico. Saludos, maestra. Nice to see you here. Session from India. Uh, truthfully, the biggest breakthrough is that my heart has cracked wide open and expanded to embrace everything and everyone. Yes, um, that is definitely another element of all of this is just the ability to, to absorb, to embrace whatever is coming to you because you just have no other choice. There's no escape now, you know, the escapes that we could have taken, you know, let's say people are like, oh, yeah, I guess every day and every hour is happy hour, right? And you drink, but to what extent, right? At, at what point do you, do you think that that's actually going to help? Um, remove any of the pain that you're dealing with or change the situation in any way when you're not actually taking any action towards improving that situation, right? So yeah, it, you, you start to just take in whatever you're getting, uh, whatever you're suffering through, whatever bad news, whatever good news, the friendships that you gain, the friendships that you lose, you just absorb it and say, all right, this is life. I can deal with this, I can. You know, I just need to trust myself. 2020 has been an emotional roller coaster. I agree. Manuela, um, appreciate it. Glad to be of service. That's how you make money. <clears throat> Eric asked, how has a dancer like you been making money, if I may ask, in this corona times? Well, it has it has been difficult. Um, obviously, events are gone um, for the most part, and the online stuff is don't you know it's not even like a paid event anyways even if you do participate i've done online courses i'm doing my on-demand courses so you know things that you can access uh, at whatever time and your own convenience and the online courses i was doing on a weekly basis like a drop-in thing but now i'm doing intensives instead because i like to see people grow and i want to be able to to give you information in the first hour give you homework right to to practice and then after that, be able to follow up with you in the next class, you know? So that's how I've been doing it. It's not the same as when I was traveling, you know, every other week, um, definitely not the same level of income, but it's a different way of me, for me to still continue to provide um, instruction, to provide that mentality, which is, which is something that's unique to my approach to dance to people out there. Um, and of course there's QFIT, which has been like so many, so great for me in so many ways, like not just the, the exercise, regular exercise or the income, but the crew, the people in QFIT are just brilliant minds. Like I, I am, I'm shocked by the, the freaking combined IQ in that group. It's 
accomplished professors, authors, uh, writers, um, business owners. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a great group. Uh, Matthew Dean, happy new year to you, sir. What does the truck end up looking like? Um, I don't get a chance to see the truck, Steve. It's usually like darkness. It's yeah, I got knocked out by the truck. Um, do I remember the person who stepped on my foot? Yes, I do. Andy from Chile. Hi, hola, como estas? All right, a uh, little comments here on Instagram. Happy New Year again, John. Wishing you the best as well. Uh, Dominico, ha hello. Justin said, the biggest blessing of the year was getting back to nature. My job included some, includes some horrible things, but while working remotely, I planted a garden and I'm taking care of goats and chickens daily. Wow, this is what you're doing. That's awesome. I think nature is another thing that we got a chance to um, really connect with this year because pretty much that's the only places you could go, right? You couldn't really go to restaurants and stuff. So if you wanted to do something, you know, after a while walking down your street blocks became pretty monotonous and boring. And so, yeah, taking like hikes and things like that. I, I have done more outdoor stuff this year than I have ever done ever in my life, even as a child. I think I've done way more outdoor stuff this year. Um, and it's mainly because of that. A uh, couple other questions here. Have your rings any meaning? Oh, beautiful question. Igaro asked this. Um, have your rings any meaning? My rings don't have any meaning other than they are mostly gifts from people. Uh, this was a gift from my friend in Singapore. Um, this one was from Turkey. This, I think I bought this one in Turkey. And this was a gift from um, two of my friends from Turkey. This is a woven silver ring. It is one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. Um, it's, it's like a braid. I don't know if you guys can see here. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, I'm still in focus, ain't I? Whatever. Here, I'm sure. It, there, you can see that, right? So it's braided, but then each of those um, ropes of silver are like wound silver. It's fascinating. It's like, it's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So um, I wear, I wear this sometimes. And now because I'm not dancing, I can wear this stuff. And of course, you know, I could be a bum every single time I come onto a live chat because really what am I doing at home? Right. But I'm trying now to put a little effort and go through my wardrobe and my earrings, like things like this. I wouldn't wear this dancing. Are you crazy? This shit would get caught in my hair and then I have to cut it out. So this is like the best opportunity for me to actually go through the things that I can't wear dancing when I go out most of the time. Uh, Dasha is also agreeing with you, by the way, Justin here, Dasha is also agreeing with you that um, nature, she got, a, she got a chance to experience nature a lot more. And I would love to visit some San Francisco trails with you when I come back out there, for sure. I love hiking now. I also realize that I really love hiking. Um, Noiset, why are you so pretty? Mm, you must be talking about this, right? I love this, it's so very pretty. <laughs> I'm joking, thank you. I, um, they're beautiful rings, thank you. Uh, Marianne, uh, my biggest blessing of 2020 was the ability to stop self-reflect and connect with people virtually that I have not had the opportunity to meet because of the demands of life. Yes, 100%. There are some amazing, even this connection right here, I would like to say, I wanted to, since 2018, do live chats. I was doing them, but I wasn't so regular with them because everyone was busy. Like how many people would actually show up? Like barely anybody, you know? Cause they were well, like on a weekend, you know, they'd rather be out doing something else. Um, this year, uh, in the past like six months or so, is when I've had a chance to be online more. I've interacted with people more. I've even connected with a lot of you more because many of you have been actually regularly attending the live chats. And then I get to chat with you after in private messages about whatever topics. Like I've learned so much about people that I would have probably never had a chance to if I was traveling all the time. Because when I was traveling all the time, it was like emails, figure out my event stuff, and then I'm out, you know. Uh, post pictures are posted, you like, you had throw a little comment here and there, and then you pack your bags and you leave again, you know? So there was no time to like sit and engage and interact in general. Um, so yeah, that's beautiful, Marion. I definitely agree with that. Um, Eric is Chileno, but he lives in Switzerland. Um, cool. 
All right. Um, so another question I got, uh, not a question actually, this one is related to the difficulties of 2020. And this is kind of sharing two people's losses. Um, I have been fortunate to not have to have suffered a loss of a life um, during this period of 2020, like no one that's close to me. I heard of people that passed away, um, friends of friends, even, uh, even family members. But personally, I did not have to deal with that. Um, two people I know, however, very close people. One, and then this might sound really silly to you, right? Lost her cat, but her cat of like, 16 years or something like that. And if you've had a pet, I had a pet once. When my cat died, I was devastated. I had her for nine years. Um, if you've ever had a pet, you know that your bond with your pet is often better than any bond you've had with any human in your life, right? Because your pets just love you. That's all they do is all they want to do is just love you. You can yell at them. You can uh, forget to feed them at the right time. You know, you can leave their litter box full of poop because you're like, oh crap, I've got to clean. And and when you call them, they come running. You know, they, they have like nothing but love to show you. So if you've had to lose a pet, especially one that you've had for, for many, many years, it's quite devastating, especially if you work from home and you're with that pet all the time and your pet doesn't even just die randomly, like getting hit by a car or something, which is pretty brutal, but um, they, they like have cancer, right? Like, so my friend's cat had like lymphoma of something, some form of cancer and was basically just struggling through the entire maybe like last two months uh, or October, November of, um, of uh, 2020 and shedding and not eating and barely able to walk and like all the places that she would jump, uh, he would jump up to, he couldn't do that either. Uh, and finally um, passed away. And then another very, very close friend of mine, um, recently lost his mom so that was oh maybe i shouldn't maybe i shouldn't have picked this topic to talk about, talk about. <sighs> okay so let's see the, the reason i want to talk about it is because i i again like i haven't dealt with anything personally but i think the way both of these people have approached um oof, it's emotional okay <clears throat> Um, but the way both of these, I kind of now wish I had a co-host, like somebody else here who could be like, okay, so back to regular programming, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, but the way these two people have dealt with the light, the loss of life is really beautiful. And I think it's important to share just in case you have gone through it or you go through it. Even for myself, if I go through it in the future, it's like something to remember. And... <clears throat> Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, let's see if how I can disconnect so I can say this without breaking down. <clears throat> oh, this is a damn emotional January 2nd bloody 2021 start, starting chat. This is not what I was expecting. I was thinking that we would be like, oh yeah, happy new year. Here are all these things that we can celebrate and here are the things I'm going to accomplish and I'm going to conquer. And here I'm like, yeah. okay. Anyways, <clears throat> I should eat one of those fur rochers, right? Like I'm sure this would cheer me up. Uh, but yeah, anyways, what people, what they went through, right. And the way they related it back to me was that <clears throat> now when they're not there, they know where that person is or their pet, right? So my friend's mom who died, he's like, you know, I go to work and I know where she is now. She's safe. She's, you know, his, his father passed away too a long time ago, but he's like, she's with my father. You know, she's, she's safe. She's not struggling. Oh, damn. I think I'm going to have to cut this short. Shit. Okay. 
she's not struggling. She's um, she's not suffering. You know, she's he doesn't have to worry. Did she eat? Did she rest properly? Did she take the medicine that she needs to? You know, same thing with my friend with the cat. Uh, you know, she, she doesn't have to worry about like, shit, today my cat didn't eat. Like, how can I make him eat? He's like shedding all this fur. He's he's meowing, he's in pain, but I don't know what to do because he can't communicate, you know? So, <clears throat> okay. So it was it was a nice way to to look at the loss is that it was <clears throat> it's really like the embodiment of rest and peace, right? Like, oh my god, okay, hold on. I need to, I feel like I need to take a break. <laughs> Someone should tell a joke. All right, Magna, note to self, not doing this in the future. I was like, not going through deep topics. Okay, but <clears throat> yeah, basically it is this, this appreciation that this person has gotten to a better place, you know? Where they were when they were struggling, like as much as it's nice for us to have them in our lives and get a chance to share another day. It's painful for the other person, you know? So, yeah. So, uh, I don't know who else is going through that kind of loss, but I hope you can find, I hope you can find a way to view it like that. Okay. This is terrible. I don't think I'm going to keep this live. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right, that's 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 that. That's basically it. So hopefully you don't have to go through that anytime soon. But if if you do, that's definitely one way to approach it, right? Uh, one way to to see that loss as actually a gain in peace, right? In in. Uh, peace and lack of suffering and all of that stuff. So why did I pick that? Shit. I think I picked it because, again, we're relating to the gratitude session that I had in my QFIT. You know, there are people in QFIT who had also lost someone close to them. And sometimes our gratitude sessions were like, we got really emotional, you know, like everyone was crying. <laughs> um, and I realized that a lot of people did deal with this kind of death and this second one with the uh the loss of my friend's mom he's very close to me so kind of hit it harder <clears throat> anyways okay let me go and read comments instead <laughs> okay tell me a joke somebody tell me a joke i'm i'm on i'm on instagram reading comments so somebody in facebook or youtube whoever's there send me a joke so that by the time i get over there i can like have something to laugh about <laughs> All right, um, Carl, Carol said, hi, Magna, do you have regular live classes? I would love to join them. Greetings from Berlin. <laughs> yes, Carol, I do. If you can send me a message, um, I can give you more information about that. They are not regular, unfortunately, so they are kind of, you know, when I am able to schedule them in, um, but they're usually like two-week online intensives. So shoot me a message, uh, DM on Instagram, and I'll be sure to give you more information on that, okay? Uh, Noiset said, um, Sorry if this comes as invasive and you don't need to answer that question, of course. I just need to know how artists, teachers, and the whole entertainment industry is able to survive, and you personally. Um, it's not too personal uh, or invasive. I mean, it's been a challenge uh, to go through. <clears throat> uh, work, I feel like, is you'll always find ways to earn income, you know, and hopefully, like for myself, you know, I, I didn't spend every single penny that I made, so I have savings um, so I can, you know, make things happen. I can go forward um, without feeling like if I don't make something this month, like I'm completely out, you know. Uh, and I do believe that things are going to come back. And, of course, I'm branching out into 
coaching now. I'm working on my website to build that new business of mindset, movement, and communications coaching. So I am sure that there is um, work. You know, there is there is a way for me to make money doing something that means something to me. That's the biggest thing right now is like with dance, you know, I, I don't want to just do things that like hook and hook, hook people in um, like a gimmick because I've always built my brand on quality and making sure that people get the m more than just dance out of my classes. Um, so I'm willing to like not do it in a way that uh, diminishes the value even though that comes at the exchange of not necessarily making income off of it at the moment, you know, but like I said, I'm, you know, working on other projects of my own that allow me to feel a sense of fulfillment that, um, you know, make, make things possible while things are kind of getting back on track. I uh, hope that answers your question. I said, Manuel said, I'm looking at my cat's poopy litter box right now. <laughs> and the Ferro Rocher. Irina, uh, ooh, lots of lots of hearts in my, <laughs> um, lots of hearts in my Instagram chat. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so um, Manuel said a relative in Mexico passed, and because of precautions, died alone of emphysema and symptoms similar. So no funeral, no memorial, no burial, no gathering to mourn. Her ashes get released tomorrow. I'm sorry to hear that. <clears throat> Oof. Yeah. Hi, Horatio. Hi, dummy. Nico. Why was the strawberry nervous? Because his mother was in a jam. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, finally, a joke. Good. Okay. Um, coming back to here, to our Facebook and YouTube. Um, Dasha said, yes, those heartbreaking sweet pets. They can't even speak. They just look at us with love. That's true. Uh, it's okay to feel emotional. Thank you. Um, Eric got emotional too. <laughs> oh, I hope nobody, else. whoever shed a tear, you can put it in your, in the chat. That way I won't feel like I, I was here by myself. Um, Dasha asks, Magna, who or what makes you feel very warm, safe and uplifted these days? Um, pretty much a lot of people in my life, uh, anyone who's kind of Currently in my life has been giving me that feeling for sure. Uh, Isam, hi, happy new year to you. Uh, family was last year, Elizabeth, uh, sister and mom. And yeah, my family's in Canada. They're not that far, but yeah, I haven't seen them um, since last year. We just missed social life. Uh, Javier, um, how are you? Namaste, just saying hi. Dance also for New Year's and after a long time. So refreshing. Glad to see you live and seeing hello to your fans. Uh, I'm glad you had some time, fun time dancing. I hope you danced extra for me because I didn't dance. Um, what's a quiet Hawaiian? Maybe this cheese will help you. Wait, you guys are funny. Um, I did not see it, Manuel. Let me look at this thing here. Okay. Uh, have you had to end, have you end classes, beginners? Igaro asked, have you and any classes, beginners to advance or interactive incremental enough? All of those, yes. Um, uh, progressive classes, live classes, on-demand classes, everything you can find the information on my website, magnacapel.com. Um, the on-demand classes are there as well. And anything that's coming up, if there's a, a live class coming up, which at the moment there isn't, but if there's anything that's coming up, I will post it there. Um, then where, what is, how do you find the year 2020? Um, I think I answered that one. I Manuel, I did see it, and I think I did answer it earlier. I hope that you saw or heard my answer. Rosita, my love. Okay, so, oh, finally, I'm so glad I got through that shit. Okay, uh, the next question I have, and this one is related to um, something I was asked. Uh, Irina asked me and a couple of people actually asked this, uh, this whole concept of like letting go of, um, this is, I guess, more in terms of relationships, friendships, um, romantic relationships, whatever that is. But before I ask that, my question to all of you is, would you prefer Ferrero Rocher 
one of these, or like any chips, whatever chips you like, like Pringles, Lay's, you know, whatever, kettle cook thingies, potato chips, whatever. So basically sweet, Ferrero Rocher, or savory. And if you don't like Ferrero Rocher, tell me in the chat. I'm so curious. I met somebody who said they did not like Ferrero Rocher. Right? Yeah. Is anyone else shocked by that? Like, oh, was I the only one that's shocked by that? But if you don't like it, I want to know. I'm so curious. Okay. Well, obviously, Saita, she's like chocolate. So she's obviously a sweet person. But if you prefer savory over sweet, throw that into the chat because I, uh, I, I would be curious to know. And that's going to lead me to my next um, question from Ibunya. For her all the way. Yep. Uh, Zeev said, are the classes suitable for beginners and advanced but not and advanced but not intermediate they are suitable actually for i would say all levels of dancers just because there's always um information in there that's broken down in very detailed uh in a detailed way to help a beginner person who doesn't know anything learn um but there's also details and nuances there for an advanced dancer who has already been dancing for some time to go back and say oh you know what i did not know about that technique and how does that improve everything else i'm doing so i think the classes are related to everyone um if you don't if you've never danced salsa then yeah it's not a complete beginner like here's the count, here's our timing, let's clap this out. It's not that type of class, but a beginner dancer who's had some experience with the dance and some um, you know, experience with the music uh, knows maybe their basic step at least, the classes would work. Javier said, for a Rocher, any time of the day, Alex said, I'm a sweet person. Oh, it was a joke, my bad. I freaking answered you. You see, Z, you and the jokes, they don't work. I think you need to give up on the jokes. Um, Saifa said, indeed, dark chocolate, chocolate and chili is nice. Igara said, prefers chocolate. I love dark chocolate, but Ferrero is too sweet for my taste. Okay, cool. Um, Ferrero all the way, even though I'm definitely not a sweet person. Savory and spicy all the way, Manuel said. Okay, so, um, well, I'm going to eat this eventually. I can't hold this in my hand without eating it, which is going to be a, a moment. I feel like everyone should go grab a furrow and then we can all enjoy munching on something, you know, in the, in the meantime. Um, speaking of which, actually, I would also like to uh, say, if you were here, you know, there's the feedback form, um, which I always talk about, right? MagnaGapal.com slash feedback at the moment. Um, that's where you'll be able to find those forms. Um, on this live chat, if you are enjoying it, if there are questions that you want to ask in the future, you can also throw that in there. If there's anything that you learned that you gained from being here today, you can throw that in there. Um, if you want to support me, my channel, whatever I'm doing, there are many ways to do that. You can, um, the simplest way, cheapest way is hit subscribe, you know, go to the YouTube channel, hit subscribe. Um, if you do want to also support in some way financially and give a donation, you can do that as well. I will throw that information up here on um, Facebook and Instagram, uh, Facebook and YouTube. But if you want to send something, you can always send via Venmo or Zelle at MagnaGopal uh, or send me a message if you want that information to be able to do that later. Um, and of course, if you want to gain something out of whatever support you are providing, um, if this is you know not something you would necessarily pay for, that's that's fine. You can just come and hang out and chill. This is what this is for. Um, but there's on-demand courses which you can you know you can get information, instruction, and of course you can always send me questions if there's anything that you want to clarify any further. And there's QFit Nine, which starts on Monday. That's another, you know, element of um, support for me, but also a way that you get to benefit physically, mentally, and with a really awesome community of people. All right, so um, I really want to eat this, but it takes me a while to eat it, and then I'm just going to be munching, and you guys are going to just be listening to me munch, munch, munch. Um, Pharaohs are the bomb. Try some Snickers. I love Snickers, Debraj. They are good. Okay, what we got here? Comments. Benjamin. Okay, so I'm gonna get to you, Benjamin. I'm gonna have to save this for later. I can't look at this though. Okay. So the question I received was 
when someone doesn't choose you, how do you heal the soul, right? And the reason I wanted to bring up the fervor and the savory stuff, right, is because as much as I love Fur Rocher, I understand that not everybody else does, right? Like this is this is my preference, and it's not necessarily everybody else's preference, and I need to accept that, right? Um, and I feel like sometimes when we invest in somebody, and that could be romantically or just as a friend, when we invest with someone, we when we invest in someone, we kind of are like, we we feel confident about ourselves. We think like, all right, well, you know, I have all of these things to offer, right? I am Fur Roche, let's say, right? I am Fur Roche. I love Fur Roche. How could you not love Fur Roche? Right? And you, you get this moment where you're like, when that person doesn't like, like Manuel over here prefers um, savory and spicy, right? If he had a choice between Fur Roche and, you know, like something, I don't know what, the savory and spicy, and let's say empanadas or something, right? But some hot sauce, right? Between those two things, he would probably choose the empanadas. It's not to say that Ferrero Rocher is not amazing, because it is. Um, it's just to say that that's his preference, right? And I think when we start to look at it that way, we stop devaluing this, right? We stop looking at this and saying, this is not great. We say, this is great. It's just not for that person, you know? But most of the time what we do is when someone is like, you don't like Fer Roche, is it bad? Is, is it is not worth it? It's not good, you know? Do you, do you think it's, do you, do you think negatively about it? And that's the thing, right? It's not that they think negatively about it. They just think way more positively about something else. And I feel like when we are able to look at, relationships in that way as just like we have tastes and preferences when it comes to food or the activities that we want to partake in. We also have tastes and preferences when it comes to the people that we associate with, the people that we want as friends, and definitely the people that we want to be romantically intimate with, you know? And it's not to say that someone who doesn't choose us thinks that we are not worth it or that we are not of value, it's just they have a different preference. Um, and when you, again, kind of like it's projection, right? When you stop making it personal, when you can say, I am still worth everything, I'm just, you just don't see that worth, that doesn't make me any less worthy, right? And you stop making it personal, it becomes a lot easier to walk away from it, it becomes a lot easier to let it go. And I think for me, that's been a challenge for me, for sure, because I I definitely um, struggle with that, you know, because I I project though, right? My my problem is I would project, like I would project onto the person my preferences, right? So for example, I like Fur Roche. If someone doesn't like Fur Roche, I'm like, what's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with you for not liking Fur Rocher. You just don't like Fur Rocher, right? But because I love this so much, I project onto them. And I have to be careful of that, right? And then in addition to that, there's the other part of part of the projection. Then the second stage of, uh, you know, again, an error, right, is the convincing. You don't like it? Well, let me show you how great it is. I'm going to prove it to you. How can I prove it to this person? So you just keep on pushing. You keep on trying. You keep on trying to show more and more of yourself, right? So if I was a first ship, I'm like, look, but look at the, the packaging. Okay, let me show you what's inside. Let me let, look at this thing and look at that thing, right? But they don't care because they don't like sweets. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how much you reveal about yourself and how amazing you are and you are. If they prefer savory and spicy and you're Fer Rocher, you're not on their top three or top five. 
you know? So I, I have had to work on that personally just because, you know, I do believe like as a person that I have a lot to offer, but it's taken me time to understand that not everyone wants what I have to offer, you know? And that's okay because there it's the same reason we have best friends and acquaintances. Not everyone is our best friend. Not everyone has the quality for that, right? It's the same reason why um, we are attracted to certain things like smells or whatever or colors compared to others. It's not that that is better than another. It's just a preference, you know? And when we stop placing value judgments on ourselves just because someone didn't choose us, and instead just appreciate that they have a different preference, just like we do, they could be a different person and we would be like, yeah, actually, I don't really like you, you know? Oh, well, right? Well, what can you do, right? You can't, can't change what your heart wants. You can't change what, what lightens your eyes or what makes you salivate or what lifts your heart, right? You can't change those things. Those are like instinctive, right? For me, for example, like I'll give you an example. Singapore, durian. I don't know how many people know about dur dur durian. Durian, right, is this fruit, but apparently it's quite pungent. Um, some people swear by it. They're like, oh my God, durian is so great. And other people are like, that thing is disgusting. Some people will smell it and, and they will their mouth will water because they're like, oh, I know what that tastes like. I love that taste. I can't wait to have some of it. And their mouth waters, right? And other people, nothing. There's no reaction, right? Fur Rocher, if, if, I, if I hear that, I'm like, is that Ferro Rocher somewhere? Like, if I see these somewhere, like, my eyes light up, you know? I can't, I can't help it. So there are other things that we also naturally react to like that, and physical chemistry is one of those things, you know? So I would say the, the way I have... Uh, Irina, to, to help answer that, um, how do I heal my soul is I just let my soul know that it's still inside a very worthy body, uh, a very ver worthy person with very worthy mind and heart and all of those things. I have all of those things to give. None of that is taken away from me because somebody doesn't choose me, all right? Nothing, I lose nothing. And I don't even lose the person. And that's another important thing to remember, right? Is if someone doesn't want to be with you, why would you want to be with them, right? Why would you want to spend your energy? Because I am one of those people, if I'm in a relationship or friendship, whatever, I put a lot into it. Like it, it's, a, it's an effort, it's an investment. You know, I take time out of my day to make something happen with that person, make time for them, uh, whatever, make a moment special, whatever it is, right? And if that person's not appreciative of it, or if they are not interested in it, they don't choose it, they don't want to invest back, then it's not a loss for me to not have them in my life, right? I could be saving all that energy and investing into someone else or in myself, right? So yeah, I mean, I hope that answered your um your question um igara said sponsored by ferro rocher i am trying to get sponsored by ferro rocher god damn it i have not ever even replied to a message of mine um right the heart wants heart wants what it wants i like to said um okay here we go on here Dasha said, uh, when somebody does not choose you, it hits close to home. I feed myself. I'm being spared of something that is not right for me. Yes, exactly. No need to keep things around that are not building and helping you grow and becoming a better person. Uh, Manuel here said, the feelings I feel for a person are mine and I embrace them. People are disappointed by the lack of reciprocation. It would be great, but my feelings are enjoyed by me regardless. And that's beautiful. Right. And you and, and and that's also important to know because that is a matter of control, right? That is something that you get to decide 
you know, how much you want to invest in that person. And if you find that you're thinking about someone all the time, well, then maybe you need more things to think about, right? And if you have all that time to think about someone, like, you're like, hmm, what if I put some of this attention into doing this work or creating this program or teaching these people or connecting with some close friends or my family or whatever, you know? Uh, longer explanation, but compressed to character limit. I got you, Manuel. I got you. Okay, so we have some questions here. Um, Egaro said, personal questions, don't need to answer, but have you been in love? Do you choose to be single? <laughs> Who said I'm single? No, I'm joking. I'm single. <laughs> um, have I been in love? Yes, I would like to say that I have. I think I have. Um, I haven't been in love that many times, though. I have um, loved, I would like to say that I've loved more than I've been in love. I don't actually, you know, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure how I would make that distinction between the two. I have definitely felt deep emotion for somebody. Um, if in love is a dependency, I have not felt a dependency for anyone. So I don't know. Let's, we'd have to start defining in love and love um, for me to then say which of which. Uh, as for being single, yeah, it's a choice. It's a choice because, again, going back to what I was answering in the previous question, I have, like, I've learned this about myself through my past relationships and just through every relationship that I have with people, friends especially, because because I give so much, because I, I want to give so much. And, in fact, I find personally, and, and I think this is what allows me to be a good teacher, is that... Uh, that I, I gain a lot. I feel a huge sense of fulfillment when I make other people happy. So when I see people grow, when I see my students smile or have an aha moment and they, they feel accomplished, that makes me happy. When I'm with my friends and my friends, I can make them laugh or smile or make them feel loved and appreciated, that makes me happy. When I'm with somebody intimately, and that's the one person that I'm with, I put even more into them because that's the that's my main person, right? My students, I see them once every couple of weeks, right? My friends, maybe once a week or so here, maybe not even that often. But the person I'm with, I'm talking to them regularly. I'm trying to make plans to see them on a regular basis. So they are, a, you know, priority number one. You know, for me, I don't have kids or anything like that. So they're up there. And because they're up there, I'm putting a lot of effort and a lot of attention into them and also trying to make it as beautiful as possible. So if there's problems, there are always going to be problems. But I'm always like, OK, what did I do? What can I improve? You know, how can we communicate about this? How can we grow from here? You know, so given how much I want to invest in people in general, but how much I'm willing to invest in uh, an intimate relationship. If I start to feel that the person that I am interested in or attracted to is not feeling the same, like Manuel said, these are my feelings. That's fine. You're not responsible for my feelings. However, if you don't know how to reciprocate, if you can't give something back of value or an investment or be willing to try, then yeah, I'm not going to put all that effort into you. You're, you're worth, you have your worth, but you're not worth my time right now. You know, like I have better things to do with my time, my effort, my energy than spend it on someone who is not appreciative. And that's why I choose to be single. You know, I, I prefer this engagement and interaction with all of you, which I feel is way more reciprocal than spending time in a romantic situation with someone just because I find them like physically attractive, but really they're providing nothing else. You know what I mean? I uh, hope that answered your question <laughs> a little bit personal. Yeah. Anyone, any advice on how to stay present and not dwell on the past? Um, you can, you know, one of the, the <sighs> dwelling on the past sometimes is, uh, yeah, you know, it feels like I'm um, living in the past. A good way to think about the past is to think about how it's affecting your present, right? There are a lot of things that have happened in my past that if I just sit in the past, I can sit there and say, oh, this was terrible. That was bad. This person treated me like this. I lost this and ah, la, 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 right? But if I think, 
this person treated me like this. What did I learn from that? Well, I learned that I can communicate better um, as a result. I learned where I need to set my boundaries as a result. I have chosen better since that person as a result, right? So these are ways that you can still think about your past, but you can start to move your past to your present in a way that allows you to feel more um, satisfied with your decisions, even if you made a mistake, right? And we sit in the past is where we can sit there and be like, ah, bad, 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 bad. When we bring it to the present, if we can find a way to say, whatever bad happened, it has made me this amazing person. And I am better today because of all of that. You know, and that's the way I like to look at my life. I have made shit ton of mistakes. Oh, my goodness. I have done so many things poorly. I have done, I have, I have like communicated poorly when I know later that the words I should have said were X, Y, and Z and not A, B, and C. You know, I have um, failed at relationships. I've failed at friendships. I have, you know, failed at projects. I learn from all of that though, you know? And today who I am and what I can offer today is a direct result of my past. Every single mistake, even more than all the beautiful things that have happened, because the beautiful things I think I've only been able to appreciate because of the mistakes sometimes, right? So that's one way to, to not dwell on the past and move forward. Um, Manuel says salivating to the sound of Ferrero. Yep, this is, I'm Pavlov's dog with this basically. Uh, Elipta said opens up new doors for new beginnings that we could never have imagined sometimes. Absolutely, and it's beautiful, right? Like this is one of the, the, like, the last points that I'd like to make is, um, any time that I have invested in someone, especially romantically, when I've invested in someone who wasn't deserving it in terms of not because they're a bad person, but just because they couldn't reciprocate and I was putting too much of an investment when they weren't, any time I've done that, when I've come out of it, I have learned how much I can give. You know, Sometimes I, I've always thought that I'm pretty closed off, but I realize in those moments how much I can give. Uh, when I try to fix things, I realize how much I'm willing to try, you know, how much of an effort I'm willing to put forward for a relationship. When I think of like um, what, what I could have done better, I realize how I can be better in the future, you know? So I always end up coming out of these things better. And it always opens up doors. And if it's not a door that opens up with somebody else, that's not even the point. The point is that it's just opened up a door of uh, extreme growth within me. And that is always going to be the most important thing because that is mine. That growth is mine. You know, if I am not with somebody uh, and I experience some growth with whatever, with that person and they're not in the picture anymore, they can't take that growth away from me. You know, and that's why I always say, like, whatever your goal going through. Try to find what you can take from it, what lesson you can gain from it personally. You know, what do you think you can take, adapt, and then put back out into the world? Because then that's your creation too, right? Not only is it your growth, not only is it your lesson, your experience, but it's also going to become your creation based on how you then interact with other people, how you then treat other people, how you then create and express yourself and communicate and relate to this world around you. That's yours. So it doesn't matter who was there to give that lesson to you, who showed you love or who didn't, who left, who stays, that is yours. And on that note, um, you're in love with what you're doing, what you give. Yes, uh, video magnet, uh, have a fun, okay. So if I was on an NFL team, oh boy, that's that's a tough one, Deborah. I don't even follow NFL like that. Um, preach. All right. Uh, and on this side, we've got some more questions, but we are already at 125. So I do apologize, everybody. Um, we're kind of like, we're, we're quite far into this chat, um, even further than we have been in the past. And I did not, I think I got through one, two, three. Wow, not three things on this list. Um, <laughs> but 
it was a lovely, lovely discussion with all of you. I appreciate it as always. Um, again, if you do have the time to send your feedback, I would appreciate that. Just go to magnagopal.com slash feedback um, and share your thoughts on what you enjoyed about the session. And if there were some questions that you had asked that I didn't get a chance to um, address, send them, put them in the feedback form, leave them in the comments. The, um, the replay of this will be available on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Um, and again, of course, if you would like to support, um, there are ways that you can do that. You can just hit subscribe on the YouTube channel, or if you like, you can um, send a donation, PayPal, Venmo, or Zelle, um, info at magnagopal.com or at magnagopal. If you want more information, I'm just saying that really quickly here, but if you want, you can always send me a message and I can give you that information in more detail. Cool. Um, so yeah, I hope that you all have a lovely, fantastic start to your new year. And I hope that this year treats you well and everything that happened in 2020 has contributed to a more beautiful, strong, and resilient human being within you that you are now able to share with the rest of the world um, and share with me. So I appreciate that you guys are all here January 2nd to start the new year with me as well. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed this, hit subscribe, share a comment, share the video with your friends. And um, in future chats, please send me a question, send it in advance, or just join in and tune in like you guys did today. Sorry. Sorry about getting all emotional. Um, that was not intended. Uh, that took a lot longer. I think that's probably why this took a lot longer than it should have. Um, but I appreciate all of you being human with me. And uh, more importantly, I do hope that you were able to take that lesson from that long emotional uh, attempt at trying to tell those two stories. I hope you're able to take that lesson and apply it if you should ever need. And just know that, you know, whoever... Whoever, whatever you've lost um, is in a good place. You don't have to worry about them anymore. And as long as you were there in whatever way you could have been, that's best that you could do. Yeah. So yeah, um, happy new year. Happy 2021. It's going to be a good year, I think, for all of us. I am wishing you all the most happiness and success and everything better than before. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys again in another live chat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. Please don't forget to hit subscribe. If you like the content, leave a comment, share this. And also, um, QFIT, QFIT9 starting on Monday. So if you do want to join, if you do want to sign up, that information is available at magnopal.com. Um, if you just go into the menu, you will be able to find it there. Okay. And also feedback form, please feedback form, magnopal.com slash feedback. Okay. Have a fantastic, lovely, absolutely fantastic rest of your weekend. Um, and I shall see you all very soon. Bye. How did I? Fantastic. And I can always, it takes me forever to like be able to log off with these things. And okay, cool. All right, YouTube, Facebook, peace, peace, peace. Dasha, thank you for sharing those realizations about yourself. Um, you are a wellspring of love. I believe that. I have met you. I know that for a fact. Um, Wim said, there is someone out there who would be as responsive as you would want, if not more. You're far too. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that too. Um, love you. Love you too. Thank you for sending the feedback. And Susan, happy new year. Take care, everybody. Have a great one.